Welcome back to The O Show, everything crypto and NFTs every day. I'm your host from the most windy O, live from Decentralcon, Miami, and boy, do I have the tea for you about BlockFi's Chapter 11 bankruptcy. You'll never guess who one of their creditors is. We all know that BlockFi filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy yesterday, but the court docs just revealed this. After FTX, the SCC is one of the largest creditors with BlockFi, owing the SEC $30 million. Sometime last year or the year before, BlockFi got hit by the SEC for a $100 million fine. And generally when you get fined and you settle, you make payments. Well, guess what? BlockFi owed the SEC $30 more million. This is something I really can't believe. The SEC is supposed to be here to protect us, but what were they doing? Absolutely nothing. And of course we've got some exciting news for Ripple. And of course we've got some good news for the XRP army. It looks like both Ripple and the SEC filed their summary judgment pleadings. And speaking about Ripple, I got to hang out with David Schwartz, the CTO of Ripple. At DecentralCon Miami, of course. Now let's talk a little bit more about the BlockFi Chapter 11 bankruptcy, because it looks like they sued SBF over Robinhood shares after filing for bankruptcy. And as some of you remember, SBF bought some shares for Robinhood. Y'all remember that Sam was an investor in Robinhood, and we all thought that it was bullish because Robinhood seemed to have some troubles. Robinhood was also very interested in cryptocurrency, and we thought that this was the catalyst to bring it mainstream. But in this particular case, hopefully some of the BlockFi creditors will be able to get some of their money back. But again, Sam still owes FTX quite a bit. But the case may be very hard to win. Here's why. But Jeremy Hogan, a friend of the Osho attorney, tweeted this, the FTX terms of service at 8.2.6 are very clear. All digital assets were to be held in user accounts and not to be used by FTX for any purpose. Jeremy states that there's no wiggle room here, but at the same time, if there's no funds to give back to creditors, what are you gonna do? This one's important. Silvergate Bank has been in the crypto industry for many, many years. They do market making, loans, banking services for crypto companies. But good news here is it says it has less than 20 million of deposit exposure to BlockFi. At the same time, all of these big losses could add up. We don't know what other exposure they had. And if Silvergate goes down, so will the price of Bitcoin. Miss B seems to be holding strong between 16.9 and 15.6, but at the same time, we need to break out or break down. I am simply not touching this price action right now. I just have been set. And more on BlockFi. They revealed that 680 million of bad loans to Alameda were behind bankruptcy filing. We'll eventually know the full story, but until then, there's a lot to unpack. And talking about collateralized loans, Nexo came out with a statement talking about where they get their yield from. I hope Nexo continues to thrive, but at the same time, folks, be very, very, very careful and try to custody your own coins. With that being said, when you goes out, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and send alerts. Bye-bye.